Wait a moment. This isn't a furry visual novel. Hello everyone, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming, somebody on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus, Bjorn's Path. So, it appears that today, all the stars have aligned and we are getting a double Dawn Chorus day. You're getting one for Bjorn and you're getting one for Jorgen. So, <laughs> wow, what are the odds? Okay, that's pretty crazy. Alright, double Dawn Chorus it is. But anyway guys, so we're going to be doing Bjorn, that's, that's Jorgen. There we go. This is Bjorn. All right, guys, we are just about at the cusp of where we will be staying with Bjorn. I'm very eager to see what happens today. But anyway, guys, sit back and enjoy. I'm going to you for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it, shall we? All right. <clears throat> so now, please step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort into bigger groups when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arn said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, I see that all my friends are already either at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards the one alongside Bjorn. Okay, does everyone in every group have their own telescope? Good, so now we can start. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate and, I might say, fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at the, planet, at the planets and the stars. We have a bit of a closer relation to them, after all. You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows? Maybe one day you will find some alien structures on one of the planets someday. But for now, look for an object with a golden color, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden color shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Easy to say. Hard to find. I start up the sky map, hoping that it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day, and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. I think it's finally the time to make that decision. This might be the best moment for that. So who am I going to ask? Oh, yes. Who am I going to ask, I wonder? So it looks like Travis really isn't a root. It'd be interesting if he was. Okay, so we're going with Bjorn. Big bear Bjorn. Bjorn. <laughs> even though I know this guy, this even though I don't know this guy well yet, I've grown to like him a lot. He's fun to be around, and even though he didn't look like it at first, he's quite laid back and chill. And he already said I'm free to stay in his room. I look around, searching for him. He's not far off from me, standing near one of the telescopes with Miko and Travis. He's quick to make friends, too, and I'm also glad that Miko has someone else to hang out with. I was a bit afraid that he would have problems meeting new people here. Okay, here I go. Oh, Carvin! Hey, what's up? Carvin? Hello, good seeing you again. Hey, thanks. Um, how's the assignment coming along? We're done, but only thanks to Travis. He's experienced with these sorts of things, so we asked him for a little help, and instead he did almost everything himself. I got my own telescope back at home. Using this one is no different. Did you finish already, Carvin? I wish. No. Naughty thoughts. Go away. Uh, I didn't even start. I'm not sure how to use that sky map. No, it's easy. It simply shows you the part of the sky you point your phone at. There's a menu on the right where you can choose specific planets and stars, and then maps that guide you to them. Travis takes out his phone and taps at the screen, launching the app and showing me step by step how to do this. It really does look easy. But I'm sure it's more fun doing this with the others. I'm glad I joined them now. Actually, I had hoped that Miko would try to team up with me and not Bjorn, but then again, it's not like I spent a lot of time with him today. Unless it was Bjorn who approached him about that while I went ahead. Hmm. What is this unpleasant feeling in my throat? Am I jealous of him? Maybe a bit, He, but he's my longtime friend, and so that's understandable. Wow, I had no idea I could be so possessive. I surprise myself every day, just not always positively. That seems easy enough. Anyway, we already have the telescope in position, so you can take a look if you want. But if you want to try and setting it, if you want to try setting yourself, then I don't want to ruin your fun.
What are you cats doing? Knock it off. Naughty cats. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Hold up, guys. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, guys. The cats decided to get into a fight on the counter where the dishes are. Huh, they knocked over a cup, but it didn't break, thankfully. Okay, um, where were we? All right. <clears throat> Sorry about that, guys. Let me, uh, back this up. About... 15.30? Okay, okay, we're good. Let's go. All right. <clears throat> eh, if you have everything ready, then that's even better. I'll go do the same on my telescope. You three have fun. Sure thing. Oh, what's that? What is that noise? Oh, it's horror. Okay. It's the one that's still in heat somehow. How? How are you still in heat? <laughs> Thank you, Travis. See you later. So, go ahead, Garvin. Oh, yeah, right. There it is. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a rust-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting it to look like a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Oh. Yeah, that definitely was something. Something with a capital S. I look up at the starry sky, dotted with twinkling stars. Saturn is now only a pale dot, tiny and distant. It looks nothing like the massive planet I saw just a moment ago. And it's just one pale dot among many. They're no longer just some, some shining dots in the familiar night sky. Now they're stars and planets with their moons and even distant galaxies, all of them in sizes and very real. I love looking at the night sky. Actually, I think it's more fun without a telescope. Hmm, I like that too. Just sitting on the grass, looking at the, ver at the vast expanse before you, feeling completely free. I enjoy looking for patterns in the stars. Not only the familiar constellations, but any shapes I can find. Instruments, dragons, bananas. You have no idea how many bananas are up there in the stars. Once I even found a fancy cupboard. It'd be nice if it was summer already. We could lie down together on a hill beside the guest house under the starry sky and just do nothing in particular. What else can we look at? Hmm, I see you like that. Hmm, I'm not sure myself, though. It's my first time using a telescope. Maybe we could try checking the sky map. There was a list of interesting observable objects there. Maybe it can show us what's visible at the moment. Oh, good idea. Let's try that. Ah, wait, Bjorn! Both Bjorn and Miko look at me, surprised. Only now I realize that maybe it would, be, it would have been better to wait until I was alone with Bjorn. I know that Miko will find out anyway, but asking Bjorn to let me stay in his room while Miko is standing next to us just feels... wrong. If I were in his place, that would have made me sad for sure. Yes? Could you stay here for a mo for, with me for a moment after we're done? There's something I wanted to talk about. No problem. Mika looks at us quizzically, but doesn't say anything. Phew. So, anyway, how about we look for more planets, yeah? Yeah, that was a nice idea. And so they found several. <laughs> for the next several minutes, we use the telescope to look at whatever catches our interest. Bjorn turned oddly silent, but in his eyes there's pure, there's pure fascination and a hint of some longing. I haven't seen him turn this reflective yet. From what I observed, he tends to get more cheerful the more, pe the more people there are. Miko stays mostly quiet, too, but he seems interested nevertheless. The end comes all too soon, just after we had located Polaris and wanted to take a closer look at it. Hmm. Okay, it looks like our time here is up. Thank you all for attending the lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Maybe even gained a new passion. So, what I'm thinking that sound in the background is, that low drone, is maybe a uh, satellite, is maybe satellite sound capture from the surface of a planet. That's what it reminds me of. I've been listening to a lot of analog horror lately, especially, bro uh, if you guys don't know, uh, look for, uh, if you guys want to get into analog horror, look up the, uh, channel Black Dragonfish. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that guy has got some crazy good videos. Anyway. Supper is already waiting for you in the cafeteria. You're free to take it with you need anywhere you like. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs> I hope you get to use the telescopes again sometime. This was a lot of fun. There wasn't anything about it in the schedule, but maybe. It would be nice if I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it, too. 
If you would be up to it, I'd like to come out sometime just to watch the sky without any equipment. Sure, that's a nice idea. That'd be fun too, you can count me in. You wanted to stay for a while, Carvin. Mm-hmm, if you could. Miko eyes us quizzically again, and something tells me he knows what I want to ask Bjorn. It's not like I'm doing anything bad, though. I just don't want Miko to feel rejected. Catch you later, then? Yeah, maybe at supper? Sure thing. Miko walks away, joining the small crowd of students walking back into the guest house, leaving me alone with Bjorn. Near the entrance, he turns back, looking in our direction. I wave to him, I wave him goodbye, and he waves back before disappearing inside the building. Only a few other students stayed behind, talking together or just looking at the stars. So, what did you want to talk about? So, remember when you told me you don't mind sharing your room with me? Sure, the offer still stands. So, can I stay there tonight? Just making sure. Yes, that's what I mean. Oh, well that's great. <laughs> I'm really glad. Uh, you know, this was more stressful than I imagined. Bjorn laughs and puts his heavy paw on my shoulder. Ha! No need to be nervous. If you want to ask me something, just ask away. I'm not easily offended. I nod, feeling warmer inside, and likely blushing a bit, surprised by the gesture. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. How about we go and grab supper now? Or did you have some other plans? Oh, supper sounds nice. I thought about eating out there, out here too. I thought about eating out here though. If you want to eat with Miko and the rest in the cafeteria, then we can meet later in, in later in my room. It's a nice evening, and I don't want to feel I don't feel like going back inside yet. It's cold here. I can't deny that the, that the views are nice. You know what? That sounds nice. Having some nice food under the stars. The terrace is already almost empty, and I doubt anyone will stick around here. So it would be nice an occasion to sit together with Bjorn and get to know him better. Hmm. I better go fetch the food then, and you just wait here. Shouldn't take too long. Shouldn't take too long. He's gonna come up. up. He's gonna come back with a damn feast. Oh, if you'd be so nice, yeah. Okay, I'll be back in a minute then. I'm left alone here. Well, not completely alone. The last group of students just gathered their belongings and are walking back to the guest house. I'm glad Devin lent me his jacket. Otherwise, I'd be freezing here. And knowing me, I wouldn't have asked anyone if they had a spare one. Do I have a problem with asking for help? Yes, you do. Asking about the room was really hard for me, and I got pretty nervous. And I only did it now, at the very end of the day, when I couldn't wait any longer. Hmm. I never really thought about it. At least I don't have to worry about finding a room anymore. And I'm glad I decided to ask Bjorn. He's a cool guy, and I feel at ease with him. Despite the rough exterior, he's actually quite friendly. It really is a pleasant evening, thankfully not too windy, so staying in outside isn't that bad. Some gray clouds approach from the horizon. Maybe it will snow some more tonight. Garvin? I jump a bit, scared. Devin? What are you doing here? I have to move all the telescopes back to the guest house. Leaving them out here overnight isn't a great idea. What are you doing here, though? Supper has already been served. You should go to the cafeteria unless you want to eat alone. Oh, Bjorn went to go grab some food for both of us. He wanted to eat outside. So you're staying with him tonight? Yeah, he was kind enough to let me stay in his room. Great. He's a good student. I'm glad to see you two get along well. Okay, going back to work. There's a lot of telescopes left, and I'd like to get some food, too. The two of you have fun. I'll finish this quickly and won't bother you. You're not bothering us one bit, coach. Bjorn walks across the terrace, carrying a plate in each paw. D do you need some help with those? He gestures at the seven telescopes still standing on the terrace. Thanks. I'll be fine. You two enjoy your meal. I'll deal with this quickly. Thank you, coach. Devin walks away, grabs one of the telescopes, and returns to the guest house. Here you go. Bjorn passes me a plate with two sandwiches with cheese and a slice of cake. Thanks. That looks good. Two rye bread sandwiches topped with slices of some dark cheese and sprinkled with pepper. Simple, but looks so good. Especially considering I'm already pretty hungry. The slice of apple cake is deliciously browned on the edges and smells faintly of cardamom and cinnamon. Sorry I took so long. I met Travis in the cafeteria and we chatted for a bit. Oh, it was only a moment, and it's so nice out here anyway. Yeah, it's a beautiful night. How about we sit on the edge of the terrace so that we don't get in Devon's way and have a better view of the scenery? Hmm, good idea. The wooden terrace is cold and covered with snow, but it's nothing I can't take. I sit on the edge of the coat I'm wearing to have some additional ins insulation and put the plate on my knees. Oh, I've been waiting for this. 
Bjorn eyes his food hungrily before grabbing the sandwich and biting into it. I can tell he had to stop himself from eating anything on the way. Oof, this is nice. Following his example, I grab a sandwich and take a tasting bite. Oof. What does this taste? This definitely isn't cheese. It's sweet, but savory and salty, too. Kind of nutty, but has an aftertaste similar to caramel. Hmm? What's up? Ah, you never had Brunos before? Well, no. Ah, always a first time for everything. And how do you like it? How do I say this without hurting his Norwegian pride? Well, I don't think I'm a fan, but maybe that's because I expected the taste of cheese, and that's something very different. It is different, for sure. You'll get used to it in no time, though. He gets back to eating with a smile on his face. I really envy his enthusiasm for this meal, but I continue eating my sandwich, too. Oh, it's a good picture! A stronger gust of wind makes me shiver a bit. Bjorn notices that and moves closer to me, his side pressing against mine. It doesn't help much with the cold, but at least he shields me from the wind. And I can lean against him, which is nice. If it's too cold for you here, we can move inside and finish eating at the cafeteria. No, don't worry. It's nice here, and if frostbite is the price I have to pay for that, then so be it. Back in the cafeteria, I couldn't lean against him like this, but I don't want it to end too quickly. Ah, by the way, why'd I get the feeling you didn't want Miko to hear you, to hear me ask about to hear you blah? Why'd I get the feeling that you didn't want Miko to hear you ask me about the room? Do you want to keep me si Do you want me to keep silence about that? Because that's not going to work unless you want to lie, and I'd rather not lie. No, oh, no, I don't want you to lie. I, I know it would have hurt Miko's feelings if I asked you in front of him. That's all. You'll find out sooner or later, so it's better if you message him now. You're right. It's better if he hears it from me. Such a good picture. I take out my phone and type out a message quickly. Well, as quick as I can with cold paws. Hi, I'm staying up your orange room tonight. I hope you have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow. I send the message and put the phone back in my pocket. If Mika replies, I'll read the message later. Bjorn is almost done with his food when I finish my sandwiches and grab the cake. I inspect it suspiciously before taking a bite. The sweet and tart flavor of ripe apples fills my mouth. I notice that he actually looks pretty sad in this. I wonder why. Oh, it really tastes good. The crust is perfectly baked and crumbles easily, and the hint of cinnamon enhances the flavor. It's really well balanced, and nothing overpowering with the rich taste in apples. The rich taste of apples. Hmm. Mm, this is nice. Oh yeah, they outdid themselves with the cake. Too bad we only got one small slice each. Oh, what I'd give for some more right now. You're a big glutton, but just this time I have to agree. Bjorn laughs loudly, his whole body reverberating with the sound. Look who's talking. I bet you ate at least as much as me today. This is simply a compliment to the chef. The cake was really good. <laughs> Silly boys. Hey, you're cool, you know. Oh, that's a good picture, too. Instead of responding, Bjorn looks up at the sky. Hmm. Thanks. This camp is far more intense than I expected. Not that I'm complaining, I'm really liking it here. A lot has happened today. Finishing the day with stargazing was really nice. Yeah, I didn't expect much, but I was positively surprised. Saturn looks so cool through the telescope. Like it was just a kilometer away and I could reach it, like, and I could reach it with a flying balloon. Bjorn lies down on the terrace, looking up, and I do the same next to him. Imagine how cool it would be to visit another planet someday. Which one would you like to see the most? Not a planet, I'd like to see Europe. Wait, Europe? <laughs> I'd like to see Europe. Not a planet, but I'd like to see Europa. The moon of Jupiter? Mm-hmm. Have you seen any photos of it? It looks totally crazy, like a silver orb with deep, rusty cuts. No spacecraft has landed on it yet. Supposedly, it's one of the only places in the solar system where life could potentially exist. And we never sent a spacecraft there? No, never. That's a massive and costly endeavor, though. We don't know, we don't yet know if it's even possible. The surface might not be suitable for landing. Hopefully one day. Still, it'll be a while before anyone lands there. His voice is brimming with excitement, fa with excitement and fascination. You sound quite interested in that. Didn't you think of studying astrophysics? Bjorn pushes himself up to an upright position. 
There's a weird look in his eye, and he hesitates for a moment before answering. No, that's not even a hobby for me. I just like thinking about it. Exploration of space is fascinating. I like, like my man. I like my blah blah. blah. Sorry, guys, for the uh, tongue twisting. I, I don't know what's going on with me today. Hmm. Perhaps I'm just doing a thing where I speak too quickly. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I have been trying to slow it down. I'm sure you guys have noticed. It's a habit for me to speak quickly. Exploration of space is fascinating. I like letting my imagination run wild about what we might find out there. I have to finish neuroscience first to start studying anything else, too. I barely passed the last year. Really? I'm sure you were the top of the class. Oh, I wish. I put a lot of work into studying, but this is really hard for me. I don't know if I'm the best suited for this, frankly. What made you choose neuroscience, then? I was supposed to study medicine, but I didn't get into it two years in a row. Neuroscience was still related, so I tried that. But still too hard? I don't know if I'm cut out for it. Each successive year is harder, and I'm already repeating one. I put so much time and work into it, but I'm still stuck. But I still suck. Oh, okay, but I still suck. Alright, guys, I'm gonna pause it right there. Alarm chant, hush, hush your mouth. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there, guys. We got a nice, beautiful shot of these two sitting next to each other. Bjorn is very contemplative. A very, uh... I can't help but think he is concealing something. Of course, everyone's concealing shit. That's a, one of the most common themes in these VNs that I play, is that everyone is hiding something. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. Don't, don't, expect, don't expect Double Dawn course days very often. This was just a fluke. <laughs> It'll probably happen again in the future. But anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!